On this week's episode of Dub Geographic, we celebrate Valentine's Day while we talk about the wonderful world of bird mating and try some interesting mating dances of our own. Hello Seahawks and happy almost Valentine's Day. Welcome back to your favorite science and nature show, Dub Geographic. This week we're going to discuss a subject that many of us may find familiar from our developmental stages of life. That's right, Maddie. In relation to the holiday, we're going to be talking about the birds and the bees of birds. My name is Maddie Peterson. And I'm Ashley Brooke Daniels. And this is Dub Geographic. The groundhog didn't see his shadow, so we are celebrating spring early. Just so happens that the, that's the mating season for birds. There's so many questions I'm sure come to mind when you think about birds reproducing. Sure, they can fly, but can they do it in the air? Let's first think about the anatomy of birds. They differ from humans in that their reproductive organs are actually inside of their bodies. Both females and males have a single posterior opening called the cloacal. This is the end of several organs in the bird anatomy, including the digestive, urinary, and reproductive tracts. The cloacal is found under the base of the tail, and it is covered by feathers. It is also used to release their feces and lay eggs as well. During mating seasons, the cloacal openings on both the male and female swell, protruding slightly outside of their bodies. When birds are feeling frisky, they like to rub their swollen cloacals together. Hey, AB, I feel like we jumped the gun a little bit here. <laughs> we all know we have to wine and dine our Valentine's Day dates before you jump to reproducing with them. Now, we have to tell them about the different rituals from dancing to showing off the fancy feathers and the process of pursuing their romantic bird relationships. <laughs> the courtship between birds is very interesting and differs with every species. It is typical that we see the males step up in making the first move. They put on a show for their desired lover, performing special techniques, demonstrating their strength, beauty, and health. This can be done through various dances, flapping their wings, showing off their dynamic displays of colors, intricate songs, or even straightening up their posture. Ladies, don't forget to raise your expectations. Once the female birds are receptive to their male counterparts' desperate plea for attention, they typically become lifelong breeding partners. The flirting between the pair of birds always lasts much longer than the actual breeding itself. Once the prospective mate convinces his female counterpart that he is the best possible mating partner for her, and they both agree, they participate in the quick action called the cloacal kiss. The brief rubbing of the cloacal lasts only a moment, and the mating is complete. It is an action that takes place on the ground and has to be strategically done in the right position to permit the best chances of insemination. Because of this, if you ever observe birds participating in this action during the spring mating season, you may see it happen a few times within a week while their hormones are at an all-time high, increasing the rate of success. It could take a bird a few days or sometimes a few months to produce eggs. So the next time you find yourself trying to impress a potential partner at the club, try out some bird mating dances and don't forget to display the best and most healthy characteristics you got. Thank you for joining us for our very special episode explaining the birds and the bees of birds mating. Tune in next week for another episode of everyone's favorite science and nature show. This has been Ashley Burke Daniels. And I'm Maddie Peterson. See you next week, Seahawks. Please say you're still recording this, because I am majestic.